देवी महात्म्य चैप्टर फाइव देवी कॉन्वर्सेशन विद द मैसेंजर मेडिटेशन ऑफ महासरस्वती आई मेडिटेट ऑन द इनकम्पेरेबल महासरस्वती हु होल्ड्स इन हर एट लोटस लाइक हैंड्स बेल ट्राइडेंट प्लाव कॉन्च मेस डिस्कस बो एंड एरो हु इज इफल्जेंट लाइक द मून शाइनिंग एट द फ्रिंज ऑफ अ क्लाउड हु इज द डिस्ट्रॉयर ऑफ शुंभा एंड अदर असुरास हु इज शूट फोर्थ फ्रॉम पार्वतीज बॉडी and as the substratum of the three worlds the rishi said of your indra sovereignty over the three worlds and his portion of the sacrifices were taken away by the asuras shumbha and nishumbha by force of their pride and strength the two took over the offices of the sun the moon kubera yama and varun they themselves exercised vayu's authority and agni's duty deprived of their lordships and sovereignties the devas were defeated deprived of their functions and expelled by these two great asuras all the devas thought of the invincible devi she had granted us the boon whenever in calamities you think of me that very moment i will put an end to all your worst calamities resolving thus the devas went to himavat lord of the mountains and there extolled the devi who is the elusive power of vishnu the devas said salutation to the devi to the mahadevi salutation always to her who is ever auspicious salutation to her who is the primordial cause and the sustaining power with attention we have made obeisance to her salutation to her who is terrible to her who is eternal salutation to gauri the supporter of the universe salutation always to her who is of the form of the moon and moonlight and happiness itself we bow to her who is welfare we make salutations to her who is prosperity and success salutation to the consort of shiva who is her self good fortune as well as misfortune of kings salutation always to durga who takes one across in difficulties who is the sense who is the author of everything who is the knowledge of discrimination and who is the blue black as also smoke like in complexion we prostrate before her who is at once most gentle and most terrible we salute her again and again salutation to her who is the support of the world salutation to the devi who is of the form of volition salutation again and again to the devi who is in all beings is called vishnu maya salutations again and again to the devi who abides in all beings as consciousness to the devi who abides in all beings in the form of intelligence to the devi who abides in all beings in the form of sleep to the devi who abides in all beings in the form of hunger to the devi who abides in all beings in the form of reflection to the devi who abides in all beings in the form of power to the devi who abides in all beings in the form of thirst to the devi who abides in all beings in the form of forgiveness to the devi who abides in all beings in the form of genius to the devi who abides in all beings in the form of modesty to the devi who abides in all beings in the form of peace to the devi who abides in all beings in the form of faith to the devi who abides in all beings in the form of loveliness to the devi who abides in all beings in the form of good fortune to the devi who abides in all beings in the form of activity to the devi who abides in all beings in the form of memory to the devi who abides in all beings in the form of compassion to the devi who abides in all beings in the form of contentment to the devi who abides in all beings in the form of mother to the devi who abides in all beings in the form of error to the all pervading devi who constantly presides over the senses of all beings and governs all the elements salutations again and again to her who pervading this entire world abides in the form of consciousness invoked of fear by the devas for the sake of their desired object and adored by the lord of the devas every day may she the ishwari the source of all good accomplish for us all auspicious things and put an end to our calamities and who is now again reverenced by us devas tormented by arrogant asuras 
and who call to mind by us so be sent with devotion destroy this very moment all our calamities the rishi said o prince while the devas were thus engaged in praises and other acts of adoration parvati came there to bathe in the waters of the ganga she the lovely proud said to those devas who was praised by you here an auspicious goddess sprung forth from a physical sheath and gave the reply this hymn is addressed to me by the assembled devas set at naught by the asura shumbha and routed in battle by nishumbha because that ambika came out of parvati's physical sheath kosha she is glorified as kaushiki in all the worlds after she had issued forth parvati became dark and was called kalika and stationed on mount himalaya then chanda and munda two servants of shumbha and nishumbha saw that ambika that is kaushiki wearing a surpassingly charming form they both told shumbha o king a certain woman most surpassingly beautiful dwells there shedding luster on mount himalayas such supreme beauty was never seen by anyone anywhere a certain who that goddess is and take possession of her o lord of asuras a gem among women of exquisitely beautiful limbs illuminating the quarters with her luster there she is o lord of the daityas you should see her o lord whatever jewels precious stones elephants horses and others there are in the three worlds they are all now in your house airavat gem among elephants has been brought away from indra and so also this parija tree and the horse uchaishrava here stands in your courtyard the wonderful chariot yoked with swans a wonderful gem of its class it has been brought here from brahma to whom it originally belonged here is the treasure named mahapadma brought from the land of wealth and the ocean gave a garland named kinjalkini made from unfading lotus flowers in your house stands the gold showering umbrella of varun and here is the excellent chariot that was formerly prajapati's by you o lord death's shakti weapon named utkrantida has been carried off the nose of the ocean king is among your brother's possessions nishumba has every kind of gem produced in the sea fire also gave you two garments which are purified by fire thus o lord of asuras all gems have been brought by you why this beautiful lady jewel is not seized by you the rishi said on hearing these words of chanda and munda Shumbha sent the great asura Sugriv as messenger to the Devi. He said, "Go and tell her thus in my words, and do the thing in such a manner that she may quickly come to me in love." He went there where the Devi was staying in a very beautiful spot on the mountain, and spoke to her in fine and sweet words. The messenger said, "O Devi, Shumbha, the Lord of Asuras is the supreme sovereign of the three worlds. Sent by him as messenger." I have come here to your presence. Hear to what has been said by him, whose command is never resisted among the devas, and who has vanquished all the foes of the asuras. He says, "All the three worlds are mine, and the devas are obedient to me. I enjoy all their hairs and sacrifices separately. All the choicest gems in the three worlds are in my possession, and so is the gem of the elephant Sairavat." the vehicle of the king of devas carried away by me the devas themselves offered to me with salutations that gem of horses named uchaishrava which arose at the joining of the milk ocean o beautiful lady whatever other rare objects there existed among the devas gandharvas and nagas are now with me we look upon you o devi as the jewel of women kind in the world you who are such come to me since we are the enjoyers of the best objects take to me or to my younger brother nishum of great prowess o unsteady eyed lady for you are in truth a jewel wealth great and beyond compare you will get by marrying me think over this in your mind and become my wife the rishi said thus told durga the adorable and auspicious by whom this universe is supported then became serene and said the devi said You have spoken the truth. Nothing false has been uttered by you in this matter. Shumbha is indeed the sovereign of the three worlds, 
and likewise is also nishumbha but in this matter how can that which has been promised be made false here what promise i had made already out of foolishness he who conquers me in battle removes my pride and is my match in strength in the world shall be my husband so let shumbha come here and then or nishumbha the great asura vanquishing me here let him soon take my hand in marriage why delay the messenger said o devi you are haughty talk not so before me which man in the three worlds will stand before shumbha and nishumbha all the devas verily cannot stand face to face with even the other asuras in battle why mention you o devi a single woman indra and all other devas could not stand in battle against shumbha and the other demons how will you a woman face them on my word itself you go to shumbha and nishumbha let it not be that you go to them with your dignity lost by being dragged by your hair the devi said yes it is shumbha is strong and so is nishumbha exceedingly heroic what can i do since there stands my ill considered vow taken long ago go back and tell the lord of asuras carefully all this that i have said let him do whatever he considers proper here ends the fifth chapter called devi's conversation with the messenger of devi mahatmya in markandeya purana during the period of savarni the manu